guys. Okay, so welcome to, I guess, episode three of Listening with the Lynches. Learn, I don't know. We still haven't come up with a name, really. Lynches. <laughs> um, but this is where we sort of share. I've had so much feedback and everybody's been so positive listening to the other episodes and saying, can you please keep sharing? It's opening up um, room and energy for us to have conversations in our home, whether we're mixed race or not as a couple. Um, so I love that if what we are sharing is encouraging conversation, then that's the whole point. So, um, we'll keep sharing as long as people want to keep listening. And so for today's episode, see, I don't know what episode it's in. Anyway, <laughs> I guess we want to recap a little bit of yesterday. So we did a small peaceful gathering. We sort of called it a rally, but not really. But it was, it, it turned out to be people rallying around us and with us. And Glenn, you shared, and the beautiful soul Jillian shared experiences of what it's been like growing up as black as mixed race in Canada. And um, it was just really powerful and we were, we just felt so supported and loved and it was, it, it was great to see that. And I think one of the biggest things that we wanted to share that people should start to try getting comfortable with is the understanding and I don't know I wish I had the name of the person who shared this quote if you know let me know but it's been going around everywhere it's I understand but I will never understand and so um, people who came yesterday I feel like they're getting the understanding it's sinking in that they don't actually get it and they won't because you won't feel it the same way even if it makes you sad, even if it makes you feel angry, even if it makes you want, even if you want everything to stop and you want equality and you want justice, if you are white, you will not really understand. But it doesn't mean you don't fight for it and talk about it and start learning, right? Yeah. And so some of the things we had chatted about, <laughs> you're not very chatty today. You said, you said all, all your stuff yesterday. So um, he did a great, very, very good, amazing, not good, very amazing job sharing experiences. And like I said yesterday when we were there, to have the courage to find your voice after so long, after a lifetime of being told your voice doesn't matter and what you're saying doesn't matter, to now step into the power of your voice and sharing is pretty freaking cool, man. Very proud of him. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'm, uh... Yeah, I just felt good to actually be able to, um, to uh, be heard. Like Diane said, I haven't had, I've never had a chance really. This is, I think I really haven't really talked about my struggles and my issues. Um, Oh, I think most of my life, I think I was saying someone yesterday, I think maybe when I turned 40 ish is when I really started letting people know um, my problems and the things that have, things that have happened to me and things that are currently happening happening to me. Uh, to see the surprise in people's faces when they say, well, yeah, this has happened to me here in Calgary, here in Okotoks. So, yeah, it still does happen. So, uh, you try it, um, like, I. Before I used to try and sugarcoat it and downplay it, so people who aren't aren't as sensitive, but or, or people who are sensitive to it, um, wouldn't be offended. But the thing is, though, you're not going to learn unless you hear the full truth about it. And this is so interesting because we brought I, someone was asking me yesterday, like, what do we do moving forward? And my response to that was, you know what? Like, how about we flip it? So how about Instead of you having to walk through life feeling uncomfortable and right and, and trying so hard just to make people comfortable um, to be in your presence without fear and without, you know, judgment, right? So you've, you've been walking through life trying to soften yourself so that other people aren't uncomfortable. We're at a time now where I think we, we really need to, if you're going to be an ally, if you're going to say you're in and you want things to change, what we need to do is make it uncomfortable for the racists. Make it uncomfortable for the people who are still judging. Make it uncomfortable for them. So when you're seeing it, 
You should not be feeling uncomfortable walking through life with black skin, with black history. This is not, right? It's no, it's never, it's never been acceptable, but that, let's make it uncomfortable for the assholes in the world right now who are refusing to change. Let's make them feel really uncomfortable about choosing to be on the wrong side of humanity right now. Um, is that cool with you? Okay. It works for him, works for me. The other thing we were talking about, and so where we started is um, being okay with understanding that you won't understand. And so this is where I've, I've heard people say this. It's like, well, I get it. I, like, I'm an empathetic person. I'm very evolved in that I can put myself in somebody else's situation and feel what they're feeling or understand. I understand how hard that is. And we've actually had different experiences in our life which have helped us step into that role of understanding or that space of understanding we won't understand. We've had different experiences. And just to give an analogy of, you know, where we've learned that a little bit. So in our marriage and, and through our relationship, we suffered quite a few miscarriages. And the last one that we had, like I remember saying to you, like, I feel very broken. And uh, I, I really, really struggled to come back from that and feel any kind of wholeness, right? And so there was a lot of sadness. And, and I remember at one point you looked at me and you said, I understand. And I had to look at you and say, no, you don't. Like you're with me in the sadness. Like I know you're holding space for me and I know you're sad too. And I know this is your loss too. And I know we're on this road together, but you don't understand what I feel as a woman who has lost a child from my body, right? Like, so the, uh, doesn't mean you weren't broken too, but you weren't feeling what I was feeling, right? And so when you said, I understand, I said, no, you don't. And then we flipped it, and, right? And so for you, walking through life, going through stuff, I am holding your hand through it and I'm walking this road with you, but I do not understand on a soul level, on a, like on a visceral level, what it has felt like for you to be walking through life and be judged for the skin you're in, right? Like I know, so we've had, and I've talked about this before, we've had a family member who stopped, just stopped being part of our family when Glenn came into the picture after we got married. And that's something we actually haven't talked about in a while. But like, I understand how it made me feel and it made me feel angry and it made me feel hurt and it made me feel sad. Um, and I felt that, but you know, you went through all those, or you went through that same situation, but the emotions you felt from it seemed to be very different. And I remember you at one point apologizing, apologizing for being you and apologizing for putting us through loss of family because we loved each other and I remember thinking I don't understand what that feels like I should be apologizing to you that anyone near me has put you through that so the fact that you felt so guilty about existing and loving me um, that to the point you had to feel like you have had to apologize like it just I remember thinking like we're seeing this situation through two very different eyes, right? <clears throat> yeah, I, well, you feel guilty, you know, you feel like you're, you're, not you, I felt guilty. I felt like it was my fault. I felt like, you know, because before, before it had happened, you know, you explained it and told me how much you loved your grandma and how, you know, how awesome she was and everything else and how a great relationship was you know, like, you know, how, you know, it was a struggle at first, but it's, you guys were, you know, getting along so well. And then to find out you're the fault and you're the factor for, you know, this. And, you know, in my, in my lifetime, it's happened a number of times. So, you know, you feel that guilt, you feel like, you know what, I'm the reason there's arguments, I'm the reason there's dissension in it, or, yeah, I guess, is that the right word I'm looking for? Dissension in family. Uh, you know, you have your, you know, the parents are not talking to the kids anymore, or, you know, grandmother's not showing up to, to family events, you know, but so, 
wishing ill will to whoever it may be in the family. I remember one time I, I had uh, I was dating someone and they had said that either I was going to kill her, steal her own money, or uh, and rape her. Those are the three things. Um, and <clears throat> it felt I felt guilty. I felt bad because I felt like I was uh, a cause for breaking up a family. You know, a family which is just supposed to be your closest knit people. That's that's your people. And to break up your family, or break up someone's family because of who you are. Yeah, I felt pretty guilty. And not who you are by your actions, or who you are by, right, like, by your job, or who, you, but who you are, who you were born as, where your ancestors are from, right? Like, who you are on a DNA level. Like, if that, you know, so, and, but that's what I mean, like, I don't understand what that feels like. And so we need to get very okay with understanding we won't understand that level of hurt and pain. So if you're sort of, if you're still on the fence and you're judging the protesting or you're judging the anger or you're questioning, like, are people overreacting? You're not understanding anything at this point. If, <laughs> um, But you're obviously not stepping into a place of trying to see that you're walking through the world very differently, right? We gotta be okay understanding that we won't understand each other, but we'll still stand together. Right? Yeah, I have <clears throat> you know, as a as a when you're saying you know, the family in a sense, your child or spouse or relative uh, is hurt in some way, you may not feel that pain, but you still feel for them. And it's the same way. Um you cannot under, you may not be able to understand, but you still support, right? I'm on it's what I'd like to have is well not how I however, I mean the black community to support, to be heard, um, to understand that we are going through something and we need support for our struggle. You know, um it, it's not a you can't uh pardon my language, you can't half ass it, right? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, I support you. But um you know, I, I, I can't do it this much, or I can't. It's all or nothing, right? So you have to, you gotta understand, you can't be, yeah, I support you, Black Lives Matter, but, you know, Bill said, all lives matter, so I can't, I can't show it all the way. Um, you know, I can't, I can't show support to you and Bill. You have to let them know that if you say Black Lives Matter, then Black Lives Matter. It can't be anything else. You gotta pick a lane at this point. Yeah. Like, I have, I'm not going to lie you, I had a discussion with one of my friends, I remember at work a while ago when I was working with uh, one company. And we've had many discussions, because I know, I understand he's, his point of view, um, it's not a fight, I understand it's his point of view when it comes to the all lives matter, all, my, all lives matter thing, and it has to be explained, right? Yes, I understand all lives matter, however, right now, all lives don't. If him and I were walking in an, on a, on a, I told him, I explained to him, him and I were on a, so on a C train together, right? Who would, he, and we sat down beside two people, who would they get up, who would get up and who would sit down? If, um, if a bank, and we're both dressed the same way, if a bank robbery happened and we were walking by, who's going to get in trouble? Or you want to use a bank robbery, a liquor store robbery. Who's going to get blamed first, right? And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say that, that um, all people are like that. It's just that he he had to understand that it happens, and he had to understand that. Yeah, you can say all lives matter, but right now, Black lives are the ones that are suffering. Right, that's what's brought to the front. That's what's brought to the forefront right now is that we have to see that Black lives matter. And it's not saying that we, you know, I saw someone saying we say, we're saying Black lives matter. We never said that only Black Lives Matter, um, but right now we need help, right? It's the same thing like your kids. If one of your kids fell and hurt themselves, you're not going to go to the one who's sitting there playing Nintendo or uh, video games. You're going to go to the one who's crying, right? And so, yeah, that's... Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good analogy for parents. Maybe you were still struggling with it, right? It's, yeah. But anyway... 
<laughs> Sorry. Anyway, yeah. we're thanking people who all the messages and the support and everything. We'll keep chatting. Like I said, if it if it helps. But if you're if you're sitting with one thing today, thinking what can I what can I sit with and what can I process? Yeah, maybe put yourself in a place of, okay, I really do need to understand, I won't understand. Um, and the deeper you go in that, then maybe the better level of support you'll be able to, to have for people. So when they do come to you with their stories and with their experiences, um, you can hear them. You can actually hear them, not because it makes sense to you or it's something that you've lived through, but your eyes are wide open now to the fact that it's existing and that it's still happening. It's okay to say, I understand that you're going through something that I do not understand. You know, um, yeah, it's a struggle. You know, plenty of people um, <clears throat> try to put themselves in the, in the same space, but you can't see it no matter what you do. If I could try and say, okay, you're in a room and you're the only white person in the room and it's all black people, you can't get that because ingrained in you is that sense of... Um, is that sense of, I guess you could say, security. You know that the situation is, if it does happen, you're in a spot where you're not going to be being seen or viewed anywhere near the same way. Right? It's kind of hard to flip something around if you've never experienced it. Yeah, we can't claim everyone's experiences, right? So don't try. Don't, because you're a spiritually evolved, smart human, doesn't mean you can claim everyone's experiences as your own. If it hasn't been, then don't claim it. But it doesn't mean you can't help and support, right? You don't try to claim my experiences as a woman, right? No. <laughs> no, don't try to claim. And I would never try to claim yours as a black man, right? Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening. If you think of something, we're, we'll keep the conversations coming. They can't stop in our home. They can't stop in our world, so... We'll keep sharing them with you.